Thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to recount a travel story. Um, recently traveled to the United States, helping one of the funds, one of the vehicles that are raising money to invest specifically in Greece um, over the coming years. Um, and you know, the one advantage of that is I get to go to very beautiful places like Chicago in February, where it's negative 14. Um, the other advantage is I get to relay the feedback from um, American institutional investors. And here's what I found out. First, the good news. The good news is that the bad rep that Greece used to have um, over the past, say, seven, eight years is now gone. Um, as Mr. Gudzinis says, I completely agree, the redenomination risk is off the table. Um, maybe people in this forum have known this for a while, but American investors um, now no longer think um, in that way. They don't think Greece is at risk of exiting the Eurozone, the European Union, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's the good news. The bad rep is gone. Greece could be a normal country that you allocate capital to, like you do to every other country in the world, um, if you're an American fund. Now, what are the challenges that we find now that this problem is gone? Um, there's one challenge that comes up, and it's size and liquidity. So if you're a big American fund and you want to allocate money to Greece, the biggest problem you're going to find is there's not enough big liquid names in Greek publicly traded markets, be this debt or be this equity. Um, why is this the case? Um, I think the problem is economic. It doesn't have, it's not directly, or, or rather, it doesn't originate in the financial system. Um, it originates in the real economy. Um, and this is the only statistics I'm going to use. 87.3% um, of employees in Greece are in small and medium enterprises. The EU average is 66. It's even worse. 60% of Greek employees are employed by micro enterprises. That's companies um, under, employing under 10 people. Uh, there's two problems with that. One is that it's a very inefficient way um, to run an economy. The 12.5% of people that work in large enterprises in Greece are responsible for 25%, so double the gross value add. Um, the second problem um, is shown in the financial um, sector. When 60% of people employed in Greece are microenterprises, they only have one source of capital, and that's the banking system. And as Mr. Caravias pointed out, um, despite its best efforts, the banking system in Greece still has a lot of legacy issues which increase the cost of capital. Um, so what needs to change in order to address that? I think the most important thing um, will be to enable the structural changes that allow the financial sector to help companies scale up. Um, one of the politically sensitive examples that we've recently had is pharmacies. For some reason in this country, there's an obsession with pharmacies being micro-enterprises uh, staffed by two or three people. It doesn't have to be that way. There are economies of scale, and in order to help the economy grow, we need to help <coughs> the resources of this country, being capital labor, be allocated in the most efficient manner. Um, we have to recognize that despite the very heavy contribution of SMEs to the Greek economy, it is still not the most efficient way to allocate labor and capital. Um, when this happens, it will become a lot easier for foreign capital to come in, in size, um, in public equity and debt markets. Thank you very much. Σας ευχαριστώ και εγώ πολύ κύριε Βαλατσά. Ήσασταν και περιεκτικός και πάρα πολύ σύντομος. Κυρίες και κύριοι, όπως είχα πει και στην αρχή, υπάρχουν σχεδόν 35 λεπτά για να συζητήσουμε επί όλων όσων ακούστηκαν. Θα σας δώσω την ευκαιρία να τοποθετήσετε τις ερωτήσεις σας. Θα παρακαλούσα οι ερωτήσεις να είναι σε μία πρόταση. Δεν θα ήθελα τοποθετήσεις, αλλά ερωτήσεις. Πριν την ερώτηση θα ήθελα κάθε ένας από εσά να λέει ποιος είναι και βεβαίως σε ποιον απευθύνει την ερώτηση. Ε, για να σας δώσω τον χρόνο για να προετοιμαστείτε, θα ήθελα εγώ να κάνω μια ερώτηση και νομίζω θα την απευθύνω σε όποιον θέλει να απαντήσει. Κατά τη γνώμη μου, από όσα άκουσα, υπάρχουν δύο διαφορετικοί τομείς συζήτησης σε σχέση με το τι πρέπει να κάνουμε για να προσελκύσουμε ε, ξένα κεφάλαια. Ο πρώτο τομέα αφορά βέβαια στου θεσμού, στου ελληνικού θεσμού, στο πώ δηλαδή θα μεταμορφώσουμε και την οικονομία μα, αλλά και όλα αυτά τα θεσμικά όργανα που την παρακολουθούν, προκειμένου να κάνουμε δελεαστικότερη την χώρα ω προορισμό. Το δεύτερο όμω, και νομίζω ότι σε αυτό θέλω να σταθώ, είναι ποιο είναι ο τρόπο, ποια είναι η μέθοδο 
με την οποία θα προσεγγίσουμε του επενδυτέ. Χρειαζόμαστε ένα σχέδιο, ένα πλάνο για να γίνει κάτι τέτοιο. Και θα ήθελα να ακούσω όποιον από εσά ενδιαφέρεται να τοποθετηθεί από αυτού, μέχρι να προετοιμαστούν και οι ερωτήσει από το κοινό. Υπάρχει κάποιο που θα ήθελε να απαντήσει. Παρακαλώ, κύριε Καραδάκη. It is true that we need a plan. However, I think we have outlined already what this plan should include. Effectively, every investment has two phases. The phase of initiation until the day of completion. And the second phase is the productive phase and what happens if something goes wrong with, uh, with the investment. Greece has issues on both phases. Time to closing for a transaction is very slow. I mean, we, I think all uh, speakers mentioned uh, their experience out of that. We said before that Greece needs desperately uh, capital, and they have here a list of investments of over 100 million euros, each of them, which is pending for years now. I mean, I can mention uh, in the hotel and leisure sector, uh, Cassiopeia in Corfu, 100 million euros investment is pending for several years. A fund in Rhodes, similar case. Everybody knows about Elinico, a 7 billion euro investment. The largest wind park uh, that uh, wants to be built by foreign capital in Greece, uh, an investment of over 300 million euros, is still pending for several months without the court having reached a decision. So time to completion, time to, time to closing is a very essential um, issue that we have to resolve. When we move to the second uh, phase, what's, what is happening if something goes wrong with the investment? This is what Apostolos mentioned, what, what uh, Megan mentioned, uh, also what I, I mentioned in my uh, introduction about the conferment of justice. It takes ages uh, in Greece to get a decision out of the courts, and this is something that um, investors cannot afford. So Greece, the plan that you ask is Greece to address both issues how you complete an uh, investment on time, and how you resolve a problem also on time. Thank you very much, Mr. Karavia. I don't know if there is anyone else who would like to speak to you. Of course, Mr. Kutzin, please. Only, only one observation, of course, uh, I fully second that. I, I don't think that anybody wants... This, foreign investment is a topic of the conversation, but I, think, I don't think anybody implies that uh, a, a properly functioning justice system or uh, in, uh, is legal institutions are not values in themselves. They are values for everybody, for the, for the Greeks as well as for the foreigners. And I don't think anybody wants to live in a country that only attracts foreign investment and then forgets about all of these uh, perennial values for its own population. But I think it's, it's really about the, the rule of law and, and, and political stability in our country in that real modern sense for everybody. Βλέπω ότι η δικαιοσύνη έτσι κι αλλιώ προσελκύει το ενδιαφέρον. Βλέπω και στην αίθουσα διάφορου διαπρεπεί νομικού που ενδεχομένω εξειδικεύσουν τι ερωτήσει. Παρακαλώ, υπάρχουν ερωτήσει από το κοινό. Βλέπω μια κυρία, θα μπορέσετε να τη δώσετε ένα μικρόφωνο. Δεν σα ακούμε. Είναι ανοιχτό. Hello, my name is Marina Fremoglu and I would like to address this uh, question to Mr. Καραβία. Um, you mentioned that, that there are capitals, that there are available capitals for investments in Greece. Uh, my, my personal experience being an investor in Greece from coming from the Greek side and not from uh, outside is that the risk appetite, there may be money, but the risk appetite of the Greek banks is extremely, extremely low. And they demand huge uh, personal guarantees and a very difficult... Um, um, me, um, too, too many constraints from the part of the individual. So my question is, do you think that uh, with the normalization and uh, with the, of the whole economic situation, will that be a change and will still banks be so demanding in terms of new investment? And I'm talking about healthy capital structures. Thank you. Um, thank you for the, the, the question. And, um First, let me confirm that um, uh, the, the interest that we see for foreign direct investment in, uh, in Greece at the moment is, uh, according to my experience, the best in the last maybe 20, 25 years. There is very strong interest. And uh, we have to, to take any effort, to make any effort 
to monetize this interest. But let me come on the specific question about uh, your experience. I also mentioned during my introductory speech that following the experience of the crisis, uh, banks have become more conservative in terms of credit. Um, this is uh, something that uh, I think uh, we as bankers realize on a daily basis, and you as customers also feel um, as a problem. Um, I don't think that this is going to change anytime soon because the experience that people that make decisions in the bank is uh, quite harmful, and uh, we have to go through a phase at which bank will be uh, uh, conservative until they feel more relaxed with the, situ with the situation. It will take a few years until we reach this point. This is the reason why I said uh, during my introduction that programs that provide credit enhancement mainly to SMEs are a very useful tool for the economy today. We had the experience of a program called COSME. It has been offered by EIF. It has already allocated resources of more than 1.5 billion euros in Greece. It could be very helpful for the economy if we design other similar products and other supranationals also offer such products. What you mentioned as a problem, it is indeed a problem. I do recognize that. It will take a few times until the market normalizes again. It is for Dr. Gutzman. Uh, from, I'm Theodore Trifon from Elpen Pharmaceutical Industry. I was very much impressed by your opening statement, the fact that you very specifically pinpointed the actual problem that the Greek uh, system has. And two very basic uh, problems are the relationship of academia with industry, with uh, the businesses, and of course, the, the creation of a more friendly ecosystem for startups and high tech. Uh, following your experience uh, uh, in Israel that has very, very successfully actually handled these issues, if, you're, if you were a, a consultant to the Ministry of uh, Education or Ministry of Research, what would you suggest things or measures that would uh, have uh, short term results? Well, I'll start with the, thank you for the question. I'll start with the long term results. <laughs> if you don't mind. The, the long-term results is teaching entrepreneurship. And this is something that will have an impact on the future of, of the labor market that was discussed here yesterday and today. This is something that will have an impact on the immediate unemployment. And, and, and in general, I think it is very, very important for the future for people to know how to deal with uh, business models, business plans, uh, go to market plans, etc. Now, this is this is the responsibility of the academia. Every engineer that is coming out of the of the university in Israel must go through at least the basic course, and maybe more. So, so this is the first thing. The, the second issue is, and and not less important for the short term, is the TTOs, tech transfer offices that are being established here over the last year or two uh, are very, very important because they provide incentives to the uh, researchers to, um, uh, to, to, to monetize intellectual property. The researchers in Israel get a portion of the, of the, of the money. The university gets significant amounts of money, very significant amounts of money. Uh, six months ago, the Hebrew University sold a company to Intel for $15 billion uh, in the area of uh, machine vision uh, out for automotive. Uh, and, and the universities are selling, selling companies all the time in, the, in biomedical, in machine vision, in uh, AI, in many, many areas. Um, uh, in addition to that, in order to make the research more, more relevant, obviously the, the relationship between, between industry to, uh, to the academia are very, very important and they also bring foreign investments because, because the, the, the foreign cap, uh, multinational companies that are coming to Israel because of the academia, they invest significant amounts of Israel in Israel. Περιτώ βέβαια να σχολιάσει κανείς τι ακριβώς γίνεται στην, στα ελληνικά πανεπιστήμια. Ο κ. Τρίφων προφανώς θα μπορούσε να μας εξηγήσει για ώρες τι ακριβώς συμβαίνει σε αυτή την προσπάθεια να διασυνδεθεί η ακαδημαϊκή κοινότητα με τις επιχειρήσεις. Κάποια άλλη ερώτηση παρακαλώ. 
Βλέπω έναν κύριο εδώ χωρί μικρόφωνο. Θα έρθει η σειρά σα αμέσω μετά. Υπουργέ, βεβαίω. Thank you. Hello, this is uh, Theodos Kouzos. I'm a tax lawyer. Uh, uh, this is a question uh, relating to the fragmentation of the Hellenic economy, uh, addressed, to, addressed to Mr. Karavias and to Mr. Valatsas, because they both mentioned, uh, Mr. Karavias mentioned about the access to finance of Greek uh, businesses and how merging between companies would facilitate that. Uh, Mr. Valatsas spoke about the, far, the Greek pharmacies and how, uh, how many, what, what uh, level of... Uh, fragmentation there is in the market. Uh, if I may uh, mention another two examples, the Chambers of Commerce. There's a different Chamber of Commerce in Athens and Piraeus in order to register a company. There's uh, 50 or more uh, bar associations in Greece. So the fragmentation relates, uh, in my opinion, not only to Greek companies, but generally there's uh, a lot of presidents, a lot of, board of boards of directors, and there's a lot of general uh, institutions. Um, and the, my question is, why, why, why the, what is the reason behind this uh, fragmentation and what would be the way to tackle that and uh, move towards a more uh, consolidated uh, market in general? Thank you. Thank you. Um, happy to take this. So I think, as you mentioned, there's a lot of structural issues um, that have to do with the law. They have to do with political will. Um, the structure of the Greek economy to have a very fragmented um, kind of self-employed um, basis across sectors is very well embedded um, in law and in the structure of the market. Um, the point I was trying to make is that, um, of course, you need political will to change that and you need to persuade people that this is not a viable model for the modern economy. You cannot attract big institutional capital from abroad. Um, to invest in micro-businesses. You do need to scale, you do need acquisitions, you do need mergers, you need much bigger companies with access to international markets. The second point is that for as long as this structural problems exist, which will only be resolved politically, um, the only financing that the sector of the economy can get is through the banks. And unfortunately, the banks are not in a great position right now to provide um, cheap, efficient, um, and risky financing. Um, as international markets would be. A, a short answer to your question, why we have this fragmentation, I think besides legal or other reasons, there is a cultural issue uh, with the Greek society and uh, the Greek economy um, to, to observe this fragmentation that, that you mentioned. However, uh, in order to be only negative, I think through the crisis we have seen a number of uh, companies coming out of the crisis quite stronger, uh, becoming more extrovert and uh, investing a lot in innovation. And uh, I think to be fair, um, the, the Greek corporate sector has done a lot of progress during these years of, uh, of the crisis to build stronger balance sheets and a better profitability. And uh, these are the kind of companies that um, I'm encouraging to pursue um, uh, raising capital through the, the capital markets, through the, the, the stock exchange. Overall, I would say that um, uh, Greek companies have two main issues. One is the, the issue of size. Uh, companies should be encouraged to, to pursue mergers, acquisitions, so, so that we see a larger scale uh, in the corporate sector. And I think the problem of NPLs is an opportunity to, this, the, to see this transformation. Healthy companies can acquire uh, weaker companies through the process of NPL resolution. And we have seen some examples of that. We have seen consolidation in a number of, of sectors in the Greek economy. Banking is not the only one. We have seen consolidation in uh, supermarkets, for instance. We have seen consolidation in hotel and leisure. There are a number of uh, sectors where we have seen uh, consolidation. But also another issue that Greek uh, companies should address is corporate governance. We have not talked about it uh, so far. Um, most of the Greek companies are family companies. Uh, as they grow and they become uh, larger in size, they have to address the issue of corporate size, uh, of corporate governance. This is a must if they would like to pursue opportunities in the capital markets. 
Επιχειρήσει οι οποίε δύσκολα απεμπολούν βεβαίω την παραδοσιακή μορφή διοίκηση για να μετακομίσουν στην εταιρική διακυβέρνηση. Πριν περάσω στον Υπουργό, θα ήθελα μια βοήθεια, γιατί υπάρχει ένα τυφλό σημείο πίσω από την κολόνα. Αν υπάρχει κάποιο που θέλει να ρωτήσει κάτι από εκεί, θα πρέπει να με βοηθήσετε κάπω, κυρίε. Υπουργέ, συνήθω οι Υπουργοί δίνουν απαντήσει, αλλά σε αυτή την περίπτωση. Δεν no, no, I don't have an answer. Uh, I, I think we, we all understand that given the low savings rate and given the difficulties in the Greek banking system, which is doing what it can, um, it's foreign direct investment that will play, play a leading role. But simplifying and with the danger of, of caricaturing, what we have seen until now is the kind of short-term opportunistic, and I don't say this in a pejorative way, wave of investment that has gone into public markets, into specific Greek companies, we can count them in you know, one or two hands, uh, some of which have been burned badly uh, because in 2013, 2014, they thought this was the end and then they realized it was not. People lost their jobs trying to convince investment committees to invest in Greece and then uh, what we have not seen is the kind of longer-term strategic investment with few exceptions in particular areas, privatizations, or some very externally oriented businesses and sectors in Greece. So the question, and it's not addressed to, to someone in particular, I think a, a lot of the people on the panel would have something to say on this, is how do we, this is a natural process. First you have the former, then you have the latter, but how do you accelerate this process? How, what are the big policy levers because a lot of what we've been talking, to change the education system, to change the judicial system, will take a long time. We don't have that time. How, what are the big policy shifts that need to happen to go from the first type of investor to the second type of investor, which long term are going to be much more useful and, and growth uh, producing in the economy? Mrs. Green. Yeah, so simply put, I think an answer is anything that will convince foreign investors that Greece is a great long-term bet. So anything that will convince investors that Greece has its fiscal house in order, it's gained competitiveness. So I, I think there's work to do on both those sides. Um, in terms of the fiscal dynamic, again, a, a kind of backstop after leaving the bailout program would give foreign investors, I think, at least some security that further down the line, there probably won't be a flare-up, but even if there were, there'd be some support. Um, and in terms of competitiveness, um, I still think there's work to be done on opening up product markets. I mean, it's not that Greece hasn't done the homework set out for it. I think the homework was slightly flawed, and, and institutions have accepted that now. Um, but even so, there's more work to be done. Otherwise, you would have a huge export boom right now in Greece, where we haven't had much. We've just had a huge collapse in imports. So anything to help um, make Greece more competitiveness. Mr. Gudzinis has asked already to give an answer to the question. I, th I think it's difficult to find um, uh, silver bullets, as they say. Uh, um, uh, in, 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 my, in my personal opinion, uh, keeping the cost of capital of the country low, as low as possible, uh, and keeping it low uh, with a duration, without the volatility that we, are, we have seen in the last several years, where a couple of years of uh, uh, stability or lower yields on the Greek government debt because of uh, political uncertainty or other macro issues, issues immediately jumping up or down. So I think the volatility is important. Keeping the cost of capital down, which is measured in, the, in a very simple way uh, through uh, low yields on government bonds, uh, f prudent fiscal policy and, and the overall view of the, of, of the country as a safe destination reflecting in the yields of government debt and being, being, being low uh, without the volatility and that will bring down the, uh, the, the that will be down the, the risk uh, uh, on, on debt as well as the, as, as well as uh, equity. So I think it, that's, that's in my view the, uh, the solution. This is Mr. Goodman. I don't think you need to wait until you have the results of your initiatives. Basically, as, as was said here, you need to, to convince the market, you have to convince the investors that you are on the right way and to give them some guarantees that you are not going to change it next year. So, so this is the basics. Uh, uh, now, in general, uh, when we talk about high tech, and again, I'm talking about different market and the, the rest of the panel, uh, you don't have to create here a, a Silicon Valley in order for the investors to come, right? So you have a huge travel industry. If you decide that you are going for travel technology, 
you are there because a startup, if he has a customer on the other side of the street, it is much easier for them than, rather than going you know, to the other side of Europe or the, or the ocean. So, so um, I think that if you focus on travel technology, on shipping, logistics, as, as was said here, if you, if you focus on food technology and agro-technology, agro uh, you can gain very fast results uh, from the point of view of bringing capital. Σα ευχαριστώ πολύ, κύριε Γκούτμαν. Κάποια επόμενη ερώτηση. Υπάρχει ένα κύριο στον οποίο δεν βλέπω. Παρακαλώ, δώστε το μικρόφωνο. Είναι το φω, δεν βλέπω τίποτα εκεί πίσω. Initial coin offerings. Thank you. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, on the so called initial coin offerings, the ICOs, which are connected with the blockchain technology and the smart contracts. Um, we've seen some successful ICOs, multi million ICOs in other countries, which are not in such need for capital injection. And I'm wondering whether ICOs for you is just a fairy tale or a promising. Uh, alternative source, uh, and more specifically, I'd like to hear which are the strengths and weaknesses, the hazards and opportunities, mainly from a, from a legal perspective, given that it is a broadly unregulated environment. And the business view of Mr. Goodman as well. Thank you very much. Have you heard the question? Yes. yes. So, uh, Mr. Gudzinis was the first one. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Mr. Gudzinis. I'm not sure I would, I, I have five children, I'm not sure I would, I would narrate a fairy tale with ICOs to any of them. So certainly not, not, not a fairy, I, I, think, I think there is a notion of, I, I want to, to go back to basics, I, I, and I, I, I really won't go into the, the legal or regulatory issues of what you mentioned, but the, the reality is there is a notion of, of, of high quality liquidity uh, to, the, to the foreign markets, um, and I think the uh, Greece needs, needs a plan, as, as Fokion elaborated, to attack that. Uh, and I think there is a lot of work to be done uh, in the more normal and, uh, and conventional sources of equity and debt financing. I think there is an A to Z. I think we're, you know, I think we're probably in the C to D right now before we, before we exploit uh, more uh, um, exciting uh, propositions. Mr. Goodman? Um, I'll start with saying that uh, the blockchain technology is a revolution and it is here to stay. But from here until talking about the ICOs, you know, uh, I think you first need to walk and only then to run. And uh, thinking about uh, the Greek economy, uh, uh, people need to, 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 to try to, to get used to thinking about the knowledge economy, investing in intangible assets, in the shares of intangible assets, to work with a startup, to work with an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, ICOs have, uh, you know, it's very unclear what you invest in. What is the prospectus? What is the data? Um, uh, whether the, the, the currency is actually equity or just you know, a currency that you can buy products as a customer. Uh, there are so many unknowns and so many differences between the different ICOs that I, I wouldn't jump to this direction. I'll take two questions because time is over. I'm looking for a gentleman here, please. Hello, uh, my name is Haluk Aykul and I'm a, I'm a Turkish guy who came to Greece as an investment broker, so to bring new uh, capital hopefully. Uh, but my question is to Mr. Gutta, since I'm very curious about technology. Uh, you, you mentioned that technology transfer offices are, are key uh, to play a, a very important role. And I had uh, the experience to work with one of them in Turkey uh, as making a workshop. Uh, my question is this, in, an eco in, a, in a system where uh, universities are totally 
uh, close, almost close to uh, private sectors. Uh, how will you, uh, what is your, your recipe to differentiate the TTOs uh, to be independent entities that would serve for the economy? Thank you. Well, I, I'm not sure they are independent. They are part of the university. The TTO is a part of the university, and they are so important because, because in the knowledge economy, you need intellectual property. And the deep technology that is manufactured by the universities, by research institutions, are the basis for, for starting uh, new startup companies. So I think they cannot be independent. Uh, they, they must be controlled by the university that actually own the intellectual property. Hi, uh, Vasilis Antoniadis. Uh, one question for Mr. Karavias is there was a lot of high, uh, expectations with the so-called Juncker plan uh, for significant uh, financing in the Greek economy and what is his assessment on how this is progressing. And the second is to the non-bank investors in the panel. I'm sure you have faced this risk-return equation in other countries uh, that have gone through challenging times. Can you share positive experiences of investments you have made in those countries? Thank you. Um, let me answer the first question. Um, I think the European funds have um, contributed uh, quite significantly in the financing of the Greek economy. Uh, institutions like EBRD, I think they are present, and uh, I would like to take the opportunity to, to, to thank them. Uh, EIB, EIF, IFC have provided uh, very valuable and efficient uh, programs that have uh, helped the banks to, to finance the real economy. The Union plan in particular uh, has not been of great help for, uh, uh, for Greece for a number of reasons. Um, the, the program was designed more to, to target uh, economies in Europe that didn't have the problems that Greece had. And uh, as a result, a lot of the requirements of the program could not be satisfied by Greek companies. So it is only a few cases, no more than uh, five or ten cases, where we have seen the, this particular uh, program applied to, to Greek corporates. Κυρίες και κύριοι, κάπου εδώ φτάσαμε στο τέλος, αλλά πριν ολοκληρώσουμε αυτό το session και επειδή ακούστηκαν πάρα πολλά, νομίζω ότι αναλύσαμε το θέμα σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό, θα ήθελα να δώσω την ευκαιρία και στους έξι ομιλητές, αν μπορούν να επιλέξουν μία λέξη, ένα πρόβλημα το οποίο θα ήθελαν πρώτα να λυθεί προκειμένου να προχωρήσουμε προς την κατεύθυνση την οποία αναλύσαν. Όποιος είναι έτοιμος, παρακαλώ, ας ξεκινήσει. Παρακαλώ. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ. Uh, I think I'll take the opportunity to answer the question posed by the former finance minister, Mr. Papa Constantino. Um, if there was one thing we could do, Greece is coming to the end of eight years of bailouts. The one single best thing the government could do is sign another bailout for another eight years with strict conditionality. <laughs> Next one. Next one. Nobody. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'll just underscore the point that, in, you know, we've heard all about structural reforms for eight years, and Greece has done a lot on that front. More needs to be done, but what we haven't heard so much about is institutional reform, and I think that should be the focus. Is there someone else? Yeah, I, I think I would like to repeat that um, uh, the, the, cu the culture of the, of the public administration and to some extent the culture of the, of the society should change in terms of how we see uh, investments in our country. Uh, as I said, so far it has been hostile. This is gradually changing, at least in the society. The society is looking at foreign direct investments in a more friendly way. The, the society understands that this is the way that the country can move forward. I think it's time now to change the public administration so that it welcomes these funds, these investments, in the best possible way. Uh, business, if it's about anything, is about uh, perceptions. Uh, businesses make decisions based on their perceptions. There's a reality, but it's the perceptions. So my big message is for those people who make policy to recognize that and work with the private sector, work with the business community to improve the perception, get the confidence going in the right direction. 
Uh, I think following uh, for, uh, Mr. Caravias's lead, um, uh, teach the teachers that uh, for, foreign investment is, is an investment in general is creating wealth, uh, not taxes, and then help the teachers teach the society that investment creates wealth and hard work and innovation and ideas and, and, and not, uh, not public sector taxation and regulations. Οι δικηγόροι πάντα έχουν τον τελευταίο λόγο. Σα ευχαριστώ πολύ, κύριε Κουτζίνη. Ευχαριστώ και όλου εσά που ήσασταν μαζί μα όλη αυτή την ώρα. Έχουμε σχεδόν φτάσει στο τέλο. Έχουμε ένα λεπτό ακόμα. Νομίζω πρέπει να κλείσουμε αυτή την ενότητα. Σα ευχαριστώ πολύ. Καλή συνέχεια.